Hi, and welcome to Underground Video Network's Behind the Counter. Welcome to this wonderful winter episode. In this one, we're going to be talking about what's happening in the new 52 universe, and I've got a quick game and book review, so stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to Underground Video Network's Behind the Counter. I am your host, Michael Boroff. With me, as always, to my left, your right is Richard Catterjohn. Hello. Oh, man. Uh... It's winter time again, so plenty of time to hunker down and uh, read books, watch movies, play video games. Yeah, it's it's been one. This is Ohio. Yes, welcome to a winter in Ohio. Yeah, um, the big news going around the comic verse is the news about the. I don't even know how you describe it with the the new Fifty Two, the out with the old and with the new, out or, with the new and with the old. Whatever. Whatever. DC, yeah. like I said, five years ago. <laughs> Good stories. That's all we yeah. want. Richard, <laughs> if you look back, Richard definitely totally called it right there. The news with the uh, the new 52 is... It's basically... It's not going away. No. No, that was the thing that really threw me off when I was reading, like, the blurbs and everything was the end of the new 52. And I'm like, what? And then, you know, you read more into it. It's like, no, it's not exactly... But yet, exactly. at the same time, they're not yes. concentrating just on that universe. Right. And as I interpret, I think it was the uh, multiversity. Yes. Is just went over bigger than you thought. Yeah, it was kind of like the idea of the new 52 was is we're going to take all this loose continuity and we're going to streamline it. The problem was is it faltered when it came to good storytelling. They realized, like you said, through multiversity, in order to get really good stories out there, we need to expand again. Oh, yeah, and, and you know, this was always out there. Yeah, I mean, when it, they first launched, they said there was 52 to other planets, and there was going yeah. to be, and I said, well, why don't we take advantage of that? But yet, yeah. they wanted to concentrate, and sales went over good. Yes. Then all of a sudden, sales... <laughs> yeah. It was their safety net. It's there. We, we acknowledge it in case we need it. They needed it. Yeah. And now it's time to go on and, like I said, tell some real good stories. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of universe. I mean, if you picked up this week's copy, we're... Well, you haven't seen it yet, right? Mm -mm. Well, Superman in another universe that was really wild. Yeah. And there's a scene that Jim Lee drew of Hitler that's just has oh, to that be was, seen. That, yeah, I don't think we're spoiling it for anybody because even I saw that when that one like exploded over the internet. Yeah, that Hitler <laughs> in, a, in a certain private situation. And reading a comic book. Reading a comic book. <laughs> and not having a very easy time of it. Not the comic book, but you know what? And I was like, ah, you you had me at Hitler pooping. I'm, I'm in, so... But yeah, you know, and like I said, this is better for I think. I really do. Yes. I mean, hopefully we can tell some stories and not, you know, as uh, we was talking the other day, a Justice League story about what the newest one where there was like some kind of plague, you know? Yes, the Amazo virus. Five episodes, five issues. Mm -hmm. That was one issue. You could have had that story knocked out in yeah. one issue back in the day. Yeah. George Prez would have had that done in nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Why do you need a story panel, five panels with that? Yeah. <laughs> to me, that just drives me nuts. Yeah. I mean, it was good art, but yet at the same time, it can be tight. Right. So it's, it's kind of like streamlining the story. It's, it's getting good stories across, and that's what's the most important thing. And in DC, here recently has been very solid when it comes to, to good storytelling. Oh, yeah. Um, the one downside to the... Well, what is the, it's the uh, convergence is the right. big. Well, this is their new crisis. Yeah, <laughs> come on, people. Crisis, crisis. crisis is basically it's been what thirty it's... years. I just wrote a paper on the cover of the Death of Supergirl, so yeah. I'm all ready for the this. You know. <laughs> yeah. The downside is is we're going to be seeing the end of a lot of books that we are fond of, but we're also getting some new books that we're going to be looking forward to. But hopefully, some of this is in other universes. True. Yes. And I mean, because what the, what's going on is what Brainiac stole a bunch of the cities, and they're all plopped mm -hmm. together in one, and they're all going to fight each other. Yeah. Wait. That was a Marvel thing a few years back. Oh, wait, they're doing it that was again. A, it was a war, and yeah. it was secret <laughs> that nobody else knew about because it was a secret war of some sort. But that's even coming back, so, yes. you know. Everything old is new again, including the DC Universe. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, we've definitely, you know, here it is beginning of 2015. It's just an entire year uh, to look forward to of good storytelling and a lot of things to look forward to. And we've been on the air for a month now, so this is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh my God. Look, we. I think we've we've been able to can more episodes <laughs> in 2015, and we were able to, you know, it's it's going to be a good year for us. And uh, 
and it's countdown to 300. Yes. Gem City Comic Con. Yes, cannot wait for that. To quote the uh, the, the famous Blues Brothers, we're getting the band back together, and everybody we hope. Everybody we hope. You know, it's it's still Ohio, and things can happen, but everything is shaping up to be most excellent. Definitely gonna be looking for. Gem City is a. a I like to go to anyways you know even if it was just going to be me and Richard it's it's one of the things I look forward to every year is Jim City can't can't talk enough about it it's it's your you know your hometown comic book convention and never not had fun there you know yep so uh, as we mentioned it is winter in Ohio so chances are you're watching this under your blanket robe slippers heated blanket you know and what better way to kill time during the winter is with comic books books and video games and I got a couple quick reviews for you things that I'm playing right now they're probably not the most current and up to date but hey you know I'm playing them so it's new to me uh, first one I would like to mention is a video game review it's called The Last of Us uh, it's on, available on the PlayStation it's also available on the PlayStation 4 which hopefully <laughs> pretty soon I'm gonna have to be rebuying this game um, it is to, to call it a survival video game would be under undercutting it um, I hate to make the correlation, but if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, this is the game for you. Um, it tells a tale of a man named Joel and this little girl named Ellie who he's protecting in a very post-apocalyptic... Uh, there's a pandemic and there are zombies. S speaking of good storytelling, that is what makes this game stand out above anything else currently right now, is the storytelling. It's not your average running gun, you know, zombies, kill them, just, no. That was the thing that kind of got me about this game is I'm used to the running gun. This one, it's stealth. It's pure survival. You can't count on the fact that you're going to get ammo every time you kill something or there's always going to be something there. It's quiet. It's stealth. The storytelling, I, you, really, you really do get engaged with these two characters. And it was one of the few games I've played in recent history where I find myself playing it like this. <laughs> you know, it's it's fantastic. So how's the graphics? Graphics are gorgeous. Oh my goodness. It plays... You ever see those reviews for games where they show you the cinematics and you're like, oh my god, that game looks incredible, but when you play it, the actual game plays like, eh, it's okay. Not this one. Oh, cool. It plays like one long uh, cinematic cutscene. It's just... It's gorgeous and it's beautiful. Uh, fantastic. You get a chance to check this one out. Definitely check this one out. Um, if you watched uh, our last episode, I did a review of the book Odd Men Out by Matt Betts. Okay. Uh, He's locally from around this area. Yes, he is an Ohio native, and that's what, you know, really just made it even more awesome, you know, was uh, just the fact that, you know, it's like one of those local boy, you know, did good, you know, books. Uh, I happened to mention in the review that while I was looking at the back, um, the critiques, you know, I was always on the back of books. Uh, not only was there somebody uh, that I recognized, I read their book, but that person happened to be from Ohio too. And that's where this book right here comes in. It's called The Walls of the Universe. It's written by Paul Melko. And yes, again, I have to, I have to stress this. Hardback, love it. Uh, Paul Melko, uh, also an Ohio native. And it's a fascinating book. Uh, not only is Paul Melko from Ohio, the story takes place in Ohio. <laughs> you know how awesome it is? You know how, like, when you're listening to a song and they mention your hometown, you know, like, we're going old school, Huey Lewis and the News, you know, it's like, hard rock and roll. It's like, oh, that's where I'm from. I'm connected to this song. That's the way this book was. It, a lot of it takes place in Finley, Ohio. Oh, wow. And Dayton and Toledo. It was just like you're reading it like, hey. But it is a great story. Um, it focuses around a character, a youth from Ohio, who runs into his doppelganger. And it turns out this doppelganger is from an alternative universe. And through a string of cons and such, uh, the main character, which is, it's kind of hard to describe. There's two main characters, but there's one main character. Same person, two universes. Um, he gets trapped, bouncing from universe to universe, where he settles in one, and it, it's really interesting because it's him, you know, trying to survive in this universe, and something you never think about if he was in another alternative universe is, well, let's see what's in this universe, and let's see what's not in this universe. 
and how could I make money off of what I know? Oh, wow. And it, it's such a little nod, but the, uh, I hate to call him the, the bad Paul, but the one who kind of sets everything in motion and takes up residence in the current hero's universe finds out that there's, there's no Rubik's Cube in that universe. So he, it's something <laughs> small that you would never think about. It's so brilliant. And it's like, there's no Rubik's Cube here? Time to make a fortune, you know? And it's, it's really good. It tells two stories of one person, but two. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I love it. And I really have to commend Paul for this. I'm a, I'm a science geek, you know? I hate to two-moan horn college educated, you know? I know, you know, I know my way around a physics lab a little bit, you know? The, the detail without being boring that he puts into a lot of the things. I don't want to ruin anything, but the good Paul, he's more concerned about getting home, but he has to have the money to do it. So he invents the pinball machine. Oh, wow. And it would be so easy to just say, oh, yeah, I built this. No, he, without being boring, he goes into the details, the physics, how everything works it's it, it was very Jules Verne-esque for me you know where he gave that level of detail without being boring and I definitely recommend this book uh, Walls of the Universe especially if you're a fan of Sliders because oh, okay. the uh, the crutch of the story too is is what happens when they find out that they weren't the only ones that had the idea about capitalizing on technology not available in this universe and those other people aren't too willing to share with it and it just made for a really good story. Uh, I believe you can pick this one up on Amazon and look up paulmelko.com. Okay. So Richard anything else to add on this wonderfully winter Ohio day? I think we've gone through a lot. I yeah. This will work good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah uh, we got the countdown to 300 so hopefully we'll see everybody that's watching the show there at Gym City. Yeah, everybody stop by us. Maybe we're filming stuff. Chrysler set. You know, who knows yeah. what's going to happen. So, hope everybody stays warm and uh, stay tuned.